Hi everybody, this is Donna Lay. I had a question from Mary Greer on the Lenormand card. She study said, group. Donna Lay, I have a question about your house's technique when reading short spreads. I find it confusing to call it houses. Uh, when what you seem to be doing is drawing a parallel of cards at random from a second deck of 36 cards, although sometimes you use the same deck minus the first set of cards. So let's assume that you drew five cards and then you laid out a second set of five cards, either over or under the first set. You then read the second set as one, as if paired with the first set, and two, as its own five card layout. I have no problem with this technique as it can be very enlightening, but why call it houses? So this seems to be semantics on the word houses. She says, houses as I understand them are primarily fixed positions with set meanings, position meanings, either according to the master method or drawn from the 36 cards laid out from 1 to 36, like in the grand tableau. So in a 5 or 9 card layout, you seem to use the house set simply as a second set of cards to be read in relation to the first set. It seems to have been a technique you created, and kudos for creating an absolutely wonderful technique, but for me it simply confuses the intent and meaning of houses. Anyone else get confused about using this term? So then there was a long discussion about houses and the word house, and uh, houses are fixed, like in astrology they're fixed, and in the Lenormand on the Grand Tableau they're fixed, 1 through 36. So I'm going to address what I do and why I do it and why I call it that, but I'm also going to say, you know what? Do what you want. It's your readings, and if you don't feel comfortable with the word, I'm perfectly okay with you calling it anything you want and even not using the technique. This is just another option for you. I find it very powerful for me. It gives great depth and detail to readings, um, but it's not for everybody. So let's I'll show you my reasoning, and I'll let you judge for yourself whether you think it fits for you or not. So first, I'd like to thank you, Mary, for this question. I do think it's an awesome question. It's an uh, excellent question in terms of semantics, and I hope that I can do a good job of clarifying how I feel about it. So let's talk first about astrology houses because they're fixed. So if we look at astrology for yourself, I will show a picture here of the astrology wheel. So that if we take, say, house one, that's uh, how others see me, this is our image, our appearance, versus let's see if we take house six, which is our physical and psychological health, day-to-day -day work and duties, personal service, or nine, which is a collective mind, broader viewpoints, it could be travel, religion, philosophy, marital status. And typically what you see in tarot is that people will take cards and they'll lay out a 12-card astrology spread with one card representing each house. Um, and so then you have the houses that are fixed and the cards that are on them. Also when we look at the astrology wheel, when the planets go through them, they land into a certain house. So if it lands in one, the mood of how others see me is then now affected by the planets flowing through it. Okay, so the two kind of play off of each other. Now, this is uh, 12 houses. I have, and other people have as well, taken out the houses that are meaningful to them. Like if I want to know specifically about myself, or the collective mind, or my physical or psychological uh, considerations, then I can take those three houses and just use cards on those three houses. Likewise with the Grand Tableau, we can do the same thing. So. If we take into consideration the Grand Tableau with the 36 cards, we have fixed houses. So, writer in one are always in the first position. Woman is always in the 29th position, and that's perfectly okay. When I started doing the Grand Tableau, I learned how incredibly powerful these card positions underneath the cards impacted the reading, and the clarity and the precision of the readings really knocked me off my feet. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was such an incredible system. So that when I went back to using smaller card spreads, so if we go back to our three, say, three card spreads, or let's say even a five card spread, I found that they felt rather flat and that something was missing. I really, really missed those house positions, but I didn't know how to do it. I mean, how do you put five cards onto a house system and have the houses not be the same five houses every time? 
So that's why I developed when you get a second deck or you can make just a bunch of flashcards of each of the 36 cards and put those down. So these you decide ahead of time what will be your houses and which will be your actual reading cards. So you kind of not charging it so much as you're just having an intention. So I would, let's say if we considered these would be our house cards, then I put the actual reading cards on top of it. And I watch how they interact. So it's like if this is a planet and it lands on this astrology house, what's the interaction between the two? So the same thing happens here. So these are more random, but it still creates that kind of mood interaction with them. So there's no way to do it where the background would be fixed. If somebody can think of a way to do it, that would be awesome. I'd like to hear about it, but this is the way I do it. Now, typically I use two different decks or I'll use flashcards for one that I made if you don't happen to have a second deck with you. However, I will say um, if you're on the go, like the other day with the Connecticut shootings, I felt very upset, very saddened. I had my Lenormand deck with me, but only one deck. But I really wanted to know why? That was the big question. Why? Why would something like this happen? What was this person going through? Had only one deck. So out of desperation, what I did is I put down five cards. And since I didn't have a second deck, I took the next deck, and that would be the reading. Okay? So house is underneath, and then the cards on top. Okay? It's not typically what I do, but you, you kind of work with what you got, you know? So that's what I did. Now here's the thing, when you are working with astrology houses or when you're working with grand tableau houses, the planets move or the cards move, the ones on top, but the houses stay fixed, they always stay the same. And the two, car the two houses that are side by side, so let's take for example garden and mountain, these two houses don't interact with each other. But the cards that land on top of them, say this landed here and this landed here, these two cards can interact with each other. Okay, so the the heart and the man can interact with each other. And then the heart can interact with the garden. The man can interact with the mountain. But I don't usually take the two cards underneath and start engaging those with each other. That's just a house system because the house colors the card. Or the, it could be the other way around. The card colors the house. So if you have a tower, if you have a dog, whatever card lands on it, the two start engaging with each other. What do we need to know about loyalty in this person's life right now? The thing that lands there is going to end up telling us you get the snake. There's something going on that's deception or deceit that's maybe considered loyal. So when I do these cards, what I noticed in this particular reading that I did on the school shooting is that... I was reading the top cards, and what landed here was woman, and what landed here was coffin. I typically don't engage these two, but in that particular spread, I says, you know, I don't usually do the houses side by side, but I can't help but look at those two. So this makes me, this kind of take, makes me take pause and say, perhaps we even consider there are other ways to look at the cards. So if we were to do it the first way I talked about it, I would consider those houses because uh, it's just a way of randomizing them a little bit. Just like you can randomize astrology houses if you only want to know about certain houses and not other houses. It's a way of kind of taking themes. This is a theme, this is a theme, and the deck chooses a theme for you. Okay, this is the card that describes the theme, the card that describes the theme. Now, if you wanted to, you could take it a step further. Again, this is not traditional, but if you do have your five card spread, so this is the past, this is your situation now, maybe this is the outcome, maybe you could use these two pairs to say something, these two pairs to say something, these two pairs and these two pairs to say something. That could all just describe our past. It no longer would be considered houses because they're now engaging with each other. Um, again, that's not the way I typically do it, but I have no qualms about doing this and I happen to think of doing it in that one particular spread just because the cards just seem so relevant to the situation. So, you know, you can do what you want. If you don't feel comfortable calling them houses, you can call them something else like foundation cards. It doesn't really matter to me what you call them. It doesn't really matter to me if you decide to use them or not. What does matter to me is that if you try it and you find it effective, that you feel comfortable going ahead and using it and calling it anything that makes you feel comfortable. For the sake of the community, it is nice to have one 
kind of a theme word so that every, everybody knows what we're, we're talking about and that's something that can be discussed. But for me, when we don't read the back cards with each other and we're only reading the top cards as they land on the back cards, that to me is more a house situation. When we start reading these back cards together, it no longer indicates houses. You're now talking about cards that are part of the actual spread. And that's my opinion. And I hope that's helpful to help facilitate discussion. So can you do the same thing and say put down a whole grand tableau with 36 randomized cards and then 36 reading cards on top of it? Traditionally that's not done, but you know what? If you want to give it a go, I'm willing to put some money down that you would find some pretty remarkable readings and it would make a great exploration. So whether you want to use only tradition and stick to that, that's perfectly okay and many people do. But if you want to spread your wings a little bit and maybe explore a little bit in terms of a little more randomization, give it a try and I'd like to hear what you find out.